Hello, welcome to the hobby world of Dr. Mike. In this video, we'll be going over the construction of this air hockey table. This is the second in a three series part, the first being the game, which has already been posted, and then there'll be a future video on the electronics. Of course, this game is already made. We'll pull up some photos out of the archive on the original construction. We'll also take apart some components of this game and show you more detail. We'll go over some construction techniques which I think you'll find very helpful when building your own table. And we'll go over some things that I discovered that really make the game much better to play. Let's get started. The play field is made out of three quarter inch plywood and a Formica laminate top. You want to start with a very high quality plywood. I used 11 layer plywood. I started by drilling quarter inch holes in the plywood and then I glued the Formica laminate on top of the plywood, then drilled 1 16th inch holes through the laminate. You're going to drill a lot of holes. I used pegboard as my hole guide. The pegboard holes are a quarter inch in diameter. So your quarter inch drill bit fits right through the pegboard and you can drill the plywood board easily with that. What you want to do is drill a few holes first and actually bolt the pegboard onto the plywood so it doesn't slip. Then, after you've glued the Formica, use the same pegboard and offset the pegboard half of the quarter inch hole. Then drill your 1 16th inch hole through the Formica, centering it on your quarter inch holes. By drilling on the side of the pegboard opposite of the direction it was offset. I made stout legs for the air hockey table out of three quarter inch thick red oak. The legs are about five inches by five inches. It's a flat bottom. The flat bottom, when polyurethane, allows for a smooth surface and can be slid across the carpet easily when moving the air hockey table. But the table is heavy enough that it stays well in place when a game is going. The legs are fastened to the box with T-nuts, four T-nuts and bolts per leg. The air box is about four inches deep. There is a one by two strip that's mounted on the inside of the air box, along with routing out some of the box to hold the play table. There's a foam strip to seal between the air box and the play field top. I tried a smaller blower, but it just didn't provide enough airflow. I also pointed the smaller blower straight up towards the table and found when you do that, that only that portion that gets the direct air had good airflow through the holes. I purchased another blower. This blower actually belongs to one of those air bounce toys for kids. It's probably a little bit oversized. Uh, it provides a lot of air. I've actually had to clamp down the intake to limit the airflow, otherwise the puck flies off of the table. I built another box for the blower and pointed the blower sideways. It provides a good flow of air and it distributes through the table 
very evenly. We mount the tabletop onto the air box, then we'll put in the side rails. This side rail has the holes for the infrared LED to beam information up to the scoreboard. The infrared LED will sit on top of the bottom rail and then fit into a hole that's on the top rail. The bottom rail is drilled and countersunk to allow wood screws to hold the tabletop to the air box. Pull the LED through the holes that are drilled and place the top rail on. Adjust the LED to fit nice into the, its hole. The top rail again has been drilled and countersunk and then tapped for stainless steel screws to mount the top rail onto the bottom rail. I originally mounted the end rails directly to the table with wood screws as stated before, but that allowed movement of the end rail which absorbed energy from the puck and the puck didn't bounce back real nice. So I installed tight fitting pins to hold the bar tightly to the table and this allowed good rebound of the puck. The end bars are curved at the goal to prevent damage of the puck. I filed the table down at the goal. This allows the puck to drop into the goal easily. There's a PVC pipe section at the back of the goal so when the puck comes in fast the puck is directed downwards into the scoring mechanism. There's a lip between the pipe and the back bar. You need to make sure that the lip doesn't allow the puck to catch. There are some pins between the bottom bar and the top bar to provide a tight fitting between the two. Tie them all together. Here's a close-up of the goal. I did have to cut some of the end trim so that it would fit around the goal. The trim, for the most part, is quarter inch plywood with a red oak laminate. It's been framed out with red oak. I encircled the whole hockey table with the trim to make it look nice. Nice piece of furniture in the game room. The finish is an oil-based polyurethane. The first coat is a gloss polyurethane mixed with about one part of thinner to four parts of polyurethane. The thinner allows nice penetration of the polyurethane into the wood. The second coat is gloss polyurethane that has not been thinned. The third and final coat is a semi-gloss polyurethane. This results in a very strong finish that looks good and will last for a long time. The pegboard used as your hold guide can now be used to keep fingers out of the electronic and you have to be able to put your own logo on the air hockey table. Enjoy.